Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, a show celebrating and questioning one of the most beloved entertainment companies in the world through honest, passionate, and clear-eyed Disney discussions. I'm Jeff DePauly, your entertainment-obsessed host with rose-colored glasses removed. Today in the show, we have the House of Mouse headlines brought to you by LaughingPlace.com, your up-to-date resource for the latest Disney news every day of the week. This episode is being released on December 14th, 2022, and here's what's been going on in the world of Disney recently. A closing date for Splash Mountain at Magic Kingdom, more Disneyland After Dark events coming to the resort, Disney's latest animated feature making a quick move to streaming, and more. Hear the latest news from the Walt Disney Company in today's House of Mouse headlines. In 2023, Disney Cruise Line will be celebrating its 25th anniversary. To mark the occasion, special Silver Anniversary at Sea Sailings are set for next summer. On these cruises, which will be held on all five of Disney's current ships, guests will encounter new entertainment, limited time enhancements, eye-catching decor, whimsical merchandise, and other delightful surprises. Plus, Captain Mickey, Captain Minnie, and other characters will don dazzling new ensembles for the event. Along with the announcement of the Silver Anniversary at Sea celebration, it was also revealed that Disney Cruise Line's Castaway Club will soon be adding a new tier, Pearl. While the perks of this status have not yet been announced, those who have embarked on 25 or more Disney Cruise Line vacations will earn this new elite level. For more information on Silver Anniversary at Sea Sailings, visit DisneyCruiseLine.com or call your favorite travel agent. Beginning next month on the Disney Fantasy, Pixar Day at Sea will debut with some incredible entertainment offerings. Starting January 7th, nine seven-night sailings on the Disney Fantasy will include a day-long celebration dedicated to the beloved tales from Pixar Animation Studios. These special sailings will feature an all-new nighttime spectacular, character encounters, dance and pool parties, and activities for the entire family. Not only will favorite characters appear around the ship, but an interactive, high-energy deck party extravaganza called Pixar Pals Celebration will also be held in the early evening. During the day, guests can also enjoy a variety of activities, such as Crush's Totally Awesome Pool Party, featuring poolside games with interactions from the dude himself, and other surprise interactive moments on the upper decks. Then, at the conclusion of Pixar Day at Sea, The Incredibles will be guests of honor at a super celebration up on deck. Mr. Incredible, Mrs. Incredible, and Frozone will be on the scene for an incredible deck party, Celebrate the Supers. Select bookings for Pixar Day at Sea sailings appear to still be available, so head to the Disney Cruise Line site for more info. Disneyland Paris has introduced a new mobile experience just for guests of their Disney Newport Bay Club. Discovery Quest will invite guests to explore the locations of the hotel, as guests will need to look all around to find the answers to riddles and more. The experience is exclusive to Disney Newport Bay Club guests, with the 30-60 to 60 minute experience being offered between 8am and 10pm. To get started, guests can scan a QR code on a sign and follow the instructions on the Discovery Quest website. Disneyland's popular Southern California resident ticket offer will return this January. SoCal residents will be able to purchase a three-day, one-park-per-day ticket for $219, which works out to $73 per day, that's valid for select weekday dates between January 9th and May 25th, 2023. Upgrades such as a park hopper ticket or purchasing Disney Genie Plus service are available at the time of purchase. For blockout dates or to buy this specially priced ticket, head to Disneyland.com. The Disneyland Resort has announced that Anaheim Ducks Day will return to Disney California Adventure on January 12th, 2023. This event will see the takeover of Hollywoodland with special hockey activities, photo opportunities, themed merchandise, specialty food and beverage offerings, and memorable experiences. Plus, new this year is an expansion of the event to select areas of the downtown Disney district. Some of the planned offerings include a player cavalcade, meet and greets, special animation academy sessions featuring Disney ducks, and more. So be sure to stop by Disney California Adventure on January 12th, as well as the downtown Disney district on the 12th and 13th for all of the fun, and go ducks! 
At long last, the Magic Happens Parade is finally returning to Disneyland. The Daytime Spectacular will step off once again on February 24th, 2023. As you may recall, Magic Happens previously had a very short run at Disneyland Park after originally debuting on February 27th, 2020, just weeks before the park would close for more than a year. The parade celebrates the awe-inspiring moments of magic that are at the heart of so many Disney stories and includes such characters as Moana and Maui, Miguel and Pepita from Coco, Anna, Elsa, and Olaf from Frozen 2, Cinderella, Arthur and Merlin from The Sword in the Stone, Tiana from The Princess and the Frog, Aurora from Sleeping Beauty, and many more. If you can't make it to the park on February 24th or just can't wait until then, the theme to Magic Happens can be streamed on Apple Music and Spotify to hold you over. Recently, Walt Disney World and Disneyland made some improvements to their Genie Plus service, although sadly this does not include the removal of the platform just yet. Guests will now be able to make changes without canceling or rebooking their Lightning Lane selections. It is important to note that the rebooking changes only apply to Genie Plus ride selections and are not applicable to individual Lightning Lane purchases. This new system is now in effect, although guests will need to update to the latest version of the Disneyland or My Disney Experience apps. Nearly three years after it was initially announced, the DuckTales World Showcase Adventure will soon debut at Epcot. The updated attraction will officially be available to guests starting Friday, December 16th. Guests will join Scrooge McDuck, his nephews, and friends as they travel around the World Showcase on a quacky quest to find the seven plunders of the world and return them to their rightful owners. The treasures can be found in the following countries, Mexico, Norway, China, Germany, Japan, France, and the United Kingdom, with each country including three assignments and one finale. Each mission takes approximately 25 to 30 minutes to complete. Upon completing a mission in a country, guests will receive an achievement in their Play Disney Parks app, and when all countries are completed, they'll unlock a playable finale mission. To embark on DuckTales World Showcase Adventure starting December 16th, guests will need to download the latest version of the Play Disney Parks app. In a recent interview, director James Cameron discussed the possibility of an updated Flight of Passage film coming to Pandora. When asked by Variety about potential updates to the world of Avatar Land at Disney's Animal Kingdom, Cameron said, When Bob Iger came back a couple of weeks ago, I did send him an email and said, You know, we can do Avatar 2 and 3 motifs and put them into the physical hardware of Avatar Flight of Passage. He liked that idea, but nothing has been decided. But, you know, we would like to carry that along and update it from time to time with things that flow back out of the new movies. He continued, Because I think there's a good synergy between the physical base where you can go and just kind of meditate and be on Pandora and how the movies progress the story and bring in new imagery. As Cameron notes, There's no official news on such updates, so it could be some time before any changes come, but we'll have to wait and see what the future could hold. Ahead of the release of Avatar The Way of Water, the original film will be shown on a number of Disney-owned networks and channels this month. Avatar aired on ABC on Sunday, December 11th, with subsequent airings on Freeform and FX set for later this month. By the way, following a re-release in theaters, Avatar is once again streaming on Disney+, Plus, so you can catch up before seeing The Way of Water on the big screen on December 16th. Disney Plus has announced it has greenlit a project for Witch Mountain. The series is a modern reinvention of the cult classic film series that takes place in the shadow of Witch Mountain. The show will follow two teens that develop strange abilities and discover their sleepy suburb may not be as idyllic as it seems. Bryce Dallas Howard will lead the pilot, alongside Isabel Gravett, Levi Milley, Bianca B. Norwood, and Jackson Kelly. Travis Fickett and Terry Metalis co-wrote the pilot of Witch Mountain and are executive producers, while Augustine Frizzell will direct and executive produce the pilot. At this point, no possible premiere date for the show is set, but more information should become available as production gets underway. After disappointing returns at the box office, Disney's Strange World is making a hasty debut on Disney+. Plus. The Walt Disney Animation Studios film will arrive on the streaming service just in time for Christmas, premiering December 23rd. 
Strange World introduces a legendary family of explorers, the Clades, as they attempt to navigate an uncharted, treacherous land alongside a motley crew and slew of ravenous creatures. Before the film arrives on Disney+, Plus, you can still catch it on the big screen at select theaters nationwide. Christmas is coming a bit early for fans of The Simpsons. Disney Plus announced that the new short, The Simpsons Meet the Bocellis and Feliz Navidad, will debut December 15th exclusively on the streaming service. In the short, Homer surprises Marge with the ultimate gift, an unforgettable performance from Italian opera superstar Andrea Bocelli and his 25-year-old son Matteo and 10-year-old daughter Virginia. The Simpsons Meet the Bocellis and Feliz Navidad is the latest in a collection of shorts from The Simpsons created exclusively for Disney+, Plus, with previous releases including Welcome to the Club, When Billy Met Lisa, Maggie Simpson in The Force Awakens from Its Nap, The Good, The Bart, and The Loki, and The Simpsons in Plus Aversary. Additionally, on December 17th, the show will celebrate its 33rd anniversary as the standalone series debuted on that day in 1989. The first 33 seasons of The Simpsons, as well as the movie and these shorts, are currently available to stream on Disney+. The Mandalorian is returning this spring. At the recent Brazil Comic Con, Lucasfilm revealed that Season 3 of the hit Star Wars series would debut on March 1st, 2023. While it's been a while since Season 2 of the show premiered on October 2020, the spin-off, The Book of Boba Fett, aired on the service last year and is probably something that fans of The Mandalorian story should watch before Season 3 of the mainline show arrives. Of course, you can catch up on that show and the first two seasons of Mandalorian, now on Disney+. Recently, the Walt Disney Company officially acquired 100% of BAMTech, the streaming video technology company that it purchased majority ownership of in 2017 from Major League Baseball. According to a footnote in the company's annual report, in November, Disney paid MLB $900 million for its final 15% stake in the company, now known as Disney Streaming. Disney and the Sports League had the right to force a buyout of the stake based on its fair market value beginning earlier this year. Disney had previously also purchased the National Hockey League's 10% stake in BAMTech for $350 million last year. BAMTech technology powers Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and Disney's other offerings, and has become a critical part of the company's streaming infrastructure. And now it's time to bring back Kyle Burbank from LaughingPlace.com. How's it going, Kyle? It's going well, Jeff. Happy, well, season finale for us. Season finale for House of Mouse Headlines, but there still is one more episode after this of Disney Coast to Coast, so make sure you tune into that. But I, I will say it is that time of year where folks are traveling for the holidays. You are very kind to hop on and record this uh, at the in-laws or close to the in-laws' house as you're traveling for the holidays currently, right? Exactly. Yeah, I've made sure to pack along my good microphone and everything. So hopefully it doesn't sound too much different than normal. Thank you for doing that, because I know it's a crazy time of year. But there is a bunch of news that we want to get to. Shall we start with the first story that Splash Mountain at Magic Kingdom is set to close on January 23rd, 2023, while the Disneyland version closing date will be announced at a later date. Now, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is currently planned to open in late 2024 at both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. It'll be interesting to see how close those are, considering the different closing dates and it would be kind of funny if Disneyland actually opens early, which wouldn't surprise me. It's not impossible. Yeah, so along with this announcement, Disney released a new piece of concept art for the upcoming ride, where they explain this new scene is the thrilling moment where you first drop into the bayou and encounter some friends, both new and familiar. What you can't tell from this rendering is that beautiful Zydeco music. Have you ever heard of Zydeco music? Because I, I have, but I never... I. Don't know if I've ever listened to it, I've just heard the word. I've never even heard the word before, but Zydeco music will fill the air. Zydeco is a special... Bl I hope I'm saying it correctly. But watch it be like 
Zdeso or something. <laughs> Zydeco is a special blend of rhythm and blues that was born in Louisiana, and when you hear it, you feel like you've truly stepped into Tiana's world. Here you'll find Lewis, who explains where this amazing music is coming from. Tiana made some new friends out there, a band full of adorable critters, including an otter, a rabbit, a raccoon, a beaver, a turtle, and others. The band members sing and play instruments made of natural materials they found in the bayou. The attraction is not a retail of the film and is actually set one year after the film completes. Isn't uh, Frozen Ever After same deal? It's like a year later? I think so, but it's kind of weird because it's like, then why are you doing all the same things? <laughs> because it's an annual celebration at that point. It's, it's not I always tradition. march up to my castle and sing Let It Go and push people backwards. <laughs> if I could push people backwards, I would love that special skill. I'll tell you With right my now. projection face that makes it look like I just have really pale makeup on. <laughs> now, Tiana, in an effort to give back to the community, has created Tiana's Foods, an employee owned company. Imagineers acknowledged the concerns of many fans of how a mountain would fit into New Orleans, an extremely flat city. New Orleans does not have mountains, but it does have salt domes, and Tiana has purchased one of these salt domes and is using it as the base for Tiana's foods. Mm -hmm. Having a hard time saying that with a straight face, but we'll get into that. Well, can I just interject here and say that that part of the info came from we sent our founder co-founder doobie to florida who got to sit and listen to imagineers talk about this when they said that but it was not a q a so he you know got the hey we got you on this one there are salt domes in uh in new orleans but he didn't get to be like yeah but uh how does that fit into Frontierland? so we, we still don't have that answer yeah, but, oh gosh. Um, the Tiana we see in Tiana's Bayou Adventure will look different than we've seen her before. The clothing she's wearing was meticulously researched and is based on what women of color actually wore in 1927. A lot of time was also put into the design of Tiana's hair. Now, all of the original voice talents from the film will be back for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, including Anika Noni Rose as Tiana, Jennifer Lewis as Madame Odie, Bruno Campos as Prince Naveen, and Michael Leon Woolley as Lewis. Splash Mountain fans, you must get on the ride before January 22nd, although they say it closes January 23rd. It actually, the last chance to, to ride is the 22nd at Magic Kingdom. So make sure you do that. Um... I don't really know if we've talked about this much, Kyle, as far as like our thoughts on the closing of Splash Mountain and bringing in Tiana and stuff. But I kind of want to touch on that a bit today and just kind of see how you're feeling about it all. Um, I mean, I'm pretty okay with it. I, I, I think people are defensive about it because, you know, it's something that we all grew up with. And you might think that the controversy surrounding the ride is overblown. And so that kind of leads to pushback. But if you just look at it from the fact that it's based on a movie that no one can see. I think it does make sense to to update it. And, you know, I th I'm willing to give it a chance, at least. Like, I love Splash Mountain, but I don't know if what I love about it is necessarily Br'er Fox and Br'er Rabbit. So if you're going to keep that same ride and put some new life into it, I, I, I mean, I'm... It could not be good once I actually ride it, but I'm totally willing to give it a chance. And I think that overall, it's... It makes sense. It's just, in today's world, it's divisive just for, you know, the larger thing of it all. Yeah, so here's the thing. I don't think it makes sense, but I do think it'll be a great attraction. Like, I am looking forward to it. I, I kind of am sitting on the fence with this one because I do think, like, the wokeness of it all is is over... Like, I just don't think anybody riding Splash Mountain really is thinking about Song of the South, and clearly anything problematic with Song of the South isn't in the ride. And I also don't have the nostalgia for it. So, like, I enjoy Splash Mountain, but it's definitely not like a, I must ride it every time I go sort of attraction. And so for me, my only reasoning as to why I'm not happy that it's happening is because, well, number one, I don't think the problem affects nearly as many people as they think. And frankly, if you want to make sure you don't offend, I'm sure Disneyland in general, offends somebody. So it's just like, you're never going to please everybody. So there's that. But on top of that, Splash Mountain always has a long line. And I think that's what bothers me. I'm, it's not like a, oh, you must keep it because it's classic or one of those sort of situations. Like, no, this is a popular attraction that, frankly, if you just kept it up, would still be a great attraction. And I'm like, Tiana deserves her own ride. She doesn't, you know, an overlay's a bit of an insult, even though I'm sure it will be wonderful. 
And I also just feel like they're really, really, you know, trying to <laughs> this whole salt mine thing or what are they called? Salt domes. Um, mm. Yeah, the salt domes. It, it just feels like they're trying to justify so much as to why this fits in there. And I don't love that about it. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah, I mean, that that's fair. But I mean, it's also like, it's just called Splash Mountain. It's not even really a mountain. It's a briar patch. So it, it's kind of silly to begin with. I don't like the it's idea. A hill. Chicken I, hill. Yeah, a hill. <laughs> Splash hill. <laughs> I do think that uh, they, I, I, you know, I'm sad to see a mountain range, a Disney mountain range mountain go away. Because this doesn't have, you know, whether or not Splash Mountain was a mountain, it had it in the name. This no longer does. You know, it's kind of, as far as fitting it into things, it's kind of funny how all of her new friends are animatronics that exist in Splash Mountain. I don't know. It just feels like a lot of justification. Like I said, I think I'll love the ride. I love Princess and the Frog. Well, I, I wouldn't say I love the movie, but I love the music of Princess and the Frog, and I like the characters a lot. So, like, I am truly looking forward to it. I just, I don't know... I guess I'd, I guess my point is I'd rather see them put their resources and energy somewhere else. But hey, this is what we're getting. I'm sure it's going to be great. I do love it for Disneyland because of the just how much it makes sense being next to New Orleans Square or hopefully mm-hmm. part of New Orleans Square. Magic Kingdom, we'll see what they do. But a lot of people had the same argument about Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain doesn't fit into Frontierland. So yeah. it's not like it's getting any worse, I guess, in that sense. But yeah, as far as the... The date, I if I had to speculate why we don't have a Disneyland one yet, I think it's because, you know, uh, Toontown's not going to open until March, and it sounds like Indy's going to have a pretty lengthy refurb, so they might be trying to figure all that out. I, I do think that Disneyland is probably smaller than Magic Kingdoms. I mean, it's half as wide, at least, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, I would think that it's probably a little bit easier, but what do I know? I've never really thought about the size of them, to be honest, and I've really never noticed uh, a difference in size. But once again, it's not a ride that like I frequent or go on every time I'm in the parks. It's one that usually if it's a hot summer day, I'll be like, all right, fine, I'll do it and uh, enjoy. And I, you know, I do enjoy it every time I do it. I think it's a, a fun ride. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. And uh, what did they say? Late 2024, they're expecting it to open. So hopefully that stays on track. Yeah. I think it could. Even if Disneyland closes a few months later, I think they can still make the goal for both of them. Yeah, so cool. Not like, you know, Universal, where they just announced an attraction. It's supposed to open in the summer of next year. We're like, oh, so probably before Tron, somehow it's going (laughs) to, we're going to have this uh, blaster thing. A Tron will go down in history, man, (laughs) as like the longest theme park attraction. Actually, how long was Haunted Mansion? That was a long time, too. That's true, because it was just a facade for sale. Yeah, that's. That's true, but that was also before the days of Diz Twitter. I don't know if you knew that. There there was things before Diz Twitter. There was no Diz Twitter back in Walt's day? No. Oh, man, it must have been a nicer time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's move on, because fan favorite Disneyland After Dark events are returning to the Disneyland Resort in 2023, with more dates added for Sweethearts Night and the introduction of an all-new theme, Princess Night. On December 12th, no earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific time, a limited number of tickets for these Disneyland After Dark events go on pre-sale for Magic Key holders. On December 14th, no earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific time, tickets will go on sale to the general public and are subject to availability. Very curious about this. Do you think they're holding tickets for general public, or do you think there is the chance it will sell out with the Magic Key holder pre-sale? I've always wondered that. And I don't know if I know the answer. Like, I feel like with Run Disney, there's a certain number. I feel like they probably would because you get a discount as a Magic Key holder, right? So they'd probably want to sell some to the general public. I just think it's interesting that in their wording, it only says subject to availability when they're talking about the general public tickets. And it doesn't have that wording with the Magic Key holder one. But obviously still subject to availability. It's not like it's unlimited. Well, you know. Maybe you have to be a verified fan, so that'll solve all the problems, Ticketmaster. Or who, <laughs> or who knows? Maybe they're just even if every key holder bought a ticket, maybe it would you know wouldn't max. I don't know how that works, but it's interesting. Um, I'm sh- that would piss off a lot of people. So I'm hoping and assuming they at least save a certain amount for general public. But get ready for. I would think they would. I, I would hope 
even as a magic key holder, you're like, I get to go all the time and now I need to go because there's going to be some special princesses out. Like, that seems silly. Yeah, but, you know, pe- people are... <laughs> I'm not putting it past people. I'm just <laughs> saying, just like... Say, magic key holders are fairly obsessed fans, so they tend to like to be at everything. But in any case, on January 31st, as well as February 2nd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 14th, and 16th, we have Sweethearts Night at Disneyland Park, where it will take place on seven date nights, which is the most ever for a Disneyland After Dark event. Celebrate the love of your life, your best pal, or cherished family at this very special evening that will put your heart aflutter. Gaze up at a special-themed fireworks show. Dance at the Royal Ball, hosted by Aladdin and Jasmine near It's a Small World. Take a moonlit cruise on the Mark Twain Riverboat with the sounds of a live jazz ensemble. Relax and unwind to the sounds of island music from a Polynesian trio drifting through the night at the Tropical Hideaway. Delight in many deliciously themed menu items available for purchase, created just for the event. And of course, you can capture every moment with photo opportunities of darling Disney couples and spots inspired by romantic scenes from Disney films such as Lady and the Tramp, and The Little Mermaid, including unlimited Disney Photo Pass digital photo downloads from the party. Now, with these parties, you can be let into the park at 6 p.m., but the party doesn't officially start till 9 p.m., which I feel like is later than it used to be. I feel like it used to be like let in at 4, party starts at 7 or something like that, but I, I could be mistaken. I could be thinking of like Oogie, Bo- uh, you know, Oogie Boogie Bash or something. Yeah, that could be other parties. I don't know about these in particular, because I've never done any of them. Yeah, I will say, if you are somebody right now who really is a rides person and doesn't have a magic key and only wants to buy a ticket to once a year, like, these aren't a bad deal. You get in three hours, let's see, 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. So, like, that's a pretty full day in the park with some added bonuses and shorter lines. So, like, if you don't care about the parades and Fantasmic and stuff like that, it's not a terrible option, I will say. I've never done the Disneyland ones. I have done After Hours at Walt Disney World, which I know were different. But uh, I I agree with you. And I've seen some fun ones. I've seen some duds. The last, I you know, we thought that the, uh, what was it, class reunion one? Oh, yeah. The grad night reunion one. We're like, oh, did this just kill the concept? When the heck was that? Was that pre-pandemic? That one? No, that was more recent. Okay, that's what I thought. And then I was like, I thought this was the return of Disneyland After Dark. I had totally forgotten about that one that you just mentioned, to be honest. Yeah, it, it didn't seem to do well. It seemed like they were still trying to sell tickets at the last minute. It was just a weird theme. It didn't make any sense. Well, it was, here's what happened. It became a greedy theme, is is my opinion, because I think they had a lot of success with 80s night and 90s night. And they're like, okay, but it was definitely a very specific crowd for those nights, right? Like, you know, there's a 10-year age range for most people there. And I think what they were like, with grad night, we can kind of encapsulate multiple decades and get, you know, even more people. And I think... It just kind of like muddled the waters. It was less specific. Now, we should mention also that on March 7th and 9th, this is where you can be invited to a royally fierce Disneyland After Dark Princess Night. This all-new first-ever event will be a celebration under the stars where adventurous heroines and aspirational hearts unite. Immerse yourself in this empowering night at Disneyland Park with iconic characters who light the world with kindness, courage, and a touch of magic. With shimmering decor, special photo ops, themed food and beverage offerings, commemorative keepsakes, and characters galore, you'll be ready to step into your own adventure of bravery and grace. Now, this one's brand new, like they said. Uh, This, I feel like, will do well. Doesn't interest me, but I feel like this will be a popular option. Well, the first thing I thought is, it's funny because they used to have the pirate and princess parties uh, way back in the day, I think at Magic Kingdom. And I'm like, oh, well, they cut out the pirates. Now it's just princesses. <laughs> princesses are selling better, apparently. Uh, you can receive a royal welcome at the Disneyland train station featuring Princess Minnie Mouse and Princess Daisy Duck with fanfare trumpeters. Enjoy an inspiring musical concert celebrating heartwarming, adventurous heroines, including Moana, Merida, and more accompanied by live vocalists. Raise the royal roof and dance the night away at the high-energy, candy-themed dance party at Tomorrowland stage with Vanellope von Schweetz. Is she a princess? Did you see the movie? A billion years ago. It's kind of the point of the movie. Oh, she's a princess? Okay. Yeah. Is she? She's not an <laughs> official Disney princess though, right? I don't know. That's that's kind of the thing I'm interested to see is whether this, this seems like the type of event where it'd be fun to have like Princess Buttercup and <laughs> Princess... Uh, Did you just make a Princess Le- Bride reference? Yeah. I princess love Leia that. And uh, yeah, those sort of like, oh, technically. 
That would be awesome. Oh, yeah, Princess Leia. That that now that would be a cool event. It does not sound that way based on the way they're marketing it, but I love your idea. And if they had that, I would actually be intrigued to go. And frankly, all that they would need is if they had a photo op with Princess Buttercup and a dude off to the side on the banjo going. <laughs> I'd sit there all night long. They already have a banjo guy and pirates. You could have like a photo op, like have it in the background and have her in Blue Bayou. Kyle, I think you just invented a <laughs> better uh, Disneyland After Dark event. I love it. You can also revel in Tiana's Southern hospitality and dance along to jazz music in New Orleans Square. You can savor specialty menu items befitting royalty throughout Disneyland Park. And, of course, the picture with the backdrops from Beauty and the Beast to Princess Diaries and the unlimited Disney uh, photo pass. So, yeah, it, it you know, these events tend to do well, it seems like. Although, like you said, they had a few misses in the past. Um, so I, I think it's one of those things that A, you either got to be super into short lines and just really care about that, or you got to be really into the theme. I think if you're on the fence, don't waste your money is kind of how I feel about them. But I will say the ones I've loved have been some of the best nights I've ever had at Disneyland. So yeah, I think it's also if you have a good balance, like if there's one or two special things you want to do, but then you also want to enjoy it, like if you don't go to Disneyland very often, like that's kind of what I did with Oogie Boogie Bash. It's like, oh, I want to ride some rides, but I also, you know, I want to go see Agatha and uh, Zombie Cap and things like that, uh, or Nesto, but then also get to do the rest of the stuff. I think that's that's probably the best approach. That's the one I would take. Yeah, so those are available. They're coming back. Life is getting slightly more normal again, so there we go. Moving on, D23, the official Disney fan club, has announced their lineup of 2023 member events as the Walt Disney Company celebrates Disney 100 with glimpses at its remarkable past and looks toward its bright future. D23 returns to the most magical place on Earth for the biggest Disney fan event of 2023 at Disney's Contemporary Resort September 8th through the 10th to celebrate 100 years of the Walt Disney Company. Fans will be among the first to hear exciting announcements and see sneak peeks from the many worlds of Disney. Disney and relive favorite memories with behind the scenes stories, special guests, and so much more at this epic event. Have you ever done Destination D23? No, I've only ever done the Expos. Yeah, same here. I mean, it's probably because we're both, well, I was West Coast based. Now I'm in the middle, but I still feel like a West Coaster. It's one of those things where, like, I think it's like double the price of Expo, if not more, and like less to do, but much fewer crowds. I don't know. It's one of those things. I don't even know if it was super local for me, whether or not I would necessarily go, but I would like to experience it one day. But I don't really hear, I mean, I know they sell out, but I don't hear of among my friends, anybody that really goes, even my Orlando local friends. So hmm. I, I do know a few people who are really into it and appreciate the different vibe from the expo so like yeah where you get to get into everything you just kind of spend the day going to panels so yeah totally different even though similarly named cool so in addition to a spectacular destination d23 event members will be among the first to see disney 100 the exhibition when it makes its global premiere at the franklin institute in philadelphia pennsylvania this february plus d23 will invite members to the walt disney studios lot for an exclusive event in honor of 100 years of beloved disney stories and characters there's the walt disney studios official tour presented by d23 you've been on that lot right i'm actually yeah. going tonight for for an event but um yeah, you've been. So it's a cool lot. If you've never been, obviously a lot of history there. It looks like it includes the tour of Walt Disney's office suite, which was recreated, which is really cool. I've done that before. Have you ever done that? I don't think I haven't done that. No, I've been to the archives and I've been up to the the upstairs archives, the library part. Okay. So yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, if you've never done it, it's a pretty darn cool tour so worth checking out also some fan favorite milestone anniversaries d23 will celebrate uh let's see in 2023 we got the 20th anniversary of finding nemo the 25th of mulan the 35th of who framed roger rabbit and uh, d23 is excited to celebrate these iconic films with extra special experiences and even more magic for d23 members and then for Halloween, we've got more anniversaries, the 30th anniversary of Hocus Pocus, the 30th anniversary of The Nightmare Before Christmas, and the 25th of Halloween Town. It's a pretty big Halloween season for, a, yeah. for Disney next year. Those are some big milestones. So that'll be cool. I, I got to be honest, the anniversary I'm 
totally excited about is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I feel like that's yeah. a film that people love and it's known that it's loved, but still doesn't get a ton of love from the company these days. Yeah, I, it's it's a strange situation with that one. I think maybe because it's like, it's Amblin, right? Um, uh, Spielberg was involved. It was Touchstone Pictures. And then, right, but I didn't know if Amblin co-produced or yeah, something. Yeah, they might have. I mean, I, that's the story I always hear about why things haven't, you know, why they haven't made more films is because Spielberg was involved and there was question over the rights of the character. But obviously, we've still seen the character in the park. So I don't know exactly what the legalities are, but I, I think it's a little messy. But still, I just mean not even necessarily with another film, just in the park. So obviously, the character's been in the parks many times. I feel like they could do more with it. And mm-hmm. hopefully they do some cool stuff for the 35th because it's a good movie. And, of course, there was a uh, Roger Rabbit is tied into Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. So that's a one as well. There's an Eddie Valent reference uh, in on Buena Vista Street. I think one of the call box or something, like one on the on Buena Vista Street, I think it's to the left. There's like either like a call box or there's like a names for mailboxes or something. And one of them is E. Valent. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Hey. Fun trivia time there, Kyle. I like that. Very good. Hopefully I'm right. I mean, I've I've definitely been there. I just can't imagine. I can't picture exactly what it is, but I know that there's something there or was. Yeah, cool. Also, D23 will be heading to Marcelin, Missouri. Of course, this is uh, where Walt Disney grew up. And they, you know, Marcelin's great. I've been, you live super close, right? Not super close. It's a little over three hours, but, you know, same state. Have you done it? I never have. No, that's why every time that this Dude. comes up, I'm like, Benji, can I cover this one? And he doesn't let you. Well, not that he doesn't let me. I did. They have another. Like, I feel like there was one I asked him about not too long ago. So I don't know if we just didn't cover it or what. But I want to go. I'm going to go at some point. Listen, even if you don't go for the work thing or an official Disney event, every September is their Toonfest celebration, which is a celebration that the Marcelin throws themselves. And that's when I went, when I was driving across the country in 2006 to to California, moving here from Massachusetts, I timed it to, you know, hit the Toonfest celebration. I met Pete Doctor there long before he was, you know, the big Pete Doctor he is today. And it was awesome. So... Highly, 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 highly recommend going for something there sometime. It's very cool. Let's move on because Walt Disney's plane is going to be restored to its 1960s design. During a celebration of Walt Disney's birthday at the Palm Springs Air Museum, Becky Klein, the director of the Walt Disney Archives, announced that the Palm Springs Air Museum, in conjunction with Phoenix Air, will restore and recreate the interior of Walt's plane. A bunch of people, I'm I'm assuming you as well, Probably saw this plane at D23 Expo, yes? I didn't see it, no. You never got there. I didn't get a chance to go over there, but I know lots of people did. Well, did you (laughs) see it at Disney MGM Studios ever? Yes, of course. Okay. So that's the thing. This this... Pre-refurbishment, obviously. Yeah, so this is an interesting thing because, like, it was on display to the public for a very long time for at, at Disney MGM Studios just as part of the park. And then it was, like, rotting in a graveyard. And they're like, okay, we're going to fix it up. And I think the first time the public has seen it since Disney MGM was at D23 Expo. Now it's on display at a museum, and they're going to do some more uh, restoration. So it's pretty good. The announcement came during the opening of a new exhibit to accompany Walt Disney's Grumman Gulfstream 1 airplane. According to D23, the restoration and recreation are anticipated to take approximately two years. Walt acquired the iconic Gulfstream in 1963 and had some creative input regarding the design of the plane's interior. The plane seated up to 15 passengers and included a galley kitchen, two restrooms, two couches, a desk, and nods to Mickey Mouse. According to the museum, the plane will likely be restored with replicas of the artifacts rather than originals. Uh, As we said, it went to D23 Expo, and yeah, it's on a long-term loan from the archives and is displayed at the Palm Springs Air Museum Collection. And uh, this just reminds me of the Walt's Office thing that they did several years back, which which is, like I said earlier, with the the tour at the lot. It's awesome. So this is kind of cool that they're doing this. Yeah, it just it was kind of funny. I'm like, two years. It's not that big of a plane, but you know, <laughs> I know these things sometimes. Especially if they're making replicas, they're gonna have to, you know, they take great care of these things. They're not just like, ah, eh, we'll just paint this. It looks kind of the same. That's the same color beige, right? So I understand that it takes time, but I'm like, it's not a 727 or 737. We're talking about Tron construction speed. <laughs> you know? We talk about practice. 
Yeah, and actually earlier this season I had Tanya Norris on the show, the Imagineer, who worked on New Orleans Square, and this is the very plane she talked about flying in with Walt. So, pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah, there's that. And, uh, Kyle, before we move on, I just want to remind folks that there's still time to pick up their Disney Coast to Coast 2023 wall, desk, or digital calendar over at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. The new year is quickly approaching and sneaking up on us, so don't forget to place your order before it's too late. With all original photos taken by me, plus Disney Parks anniversary dates marked on the calendar, it's sure to delight all Disney fans. I got mine, and it looks beautiful. Oh, good. Did you like it? I do. And my favorite part is that on DCA's birthday, it says Disney California Adventure birthday. And then it says season premiere of Disney Coast to Coast. It is true. Season 10 premiere will be on DCA's anniversary, which I think happened a couple years ago as well. Um, Just, you know, it's the way that the, the days land, but. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad you're happy with it. Uh, Speaking of New Year's stuff, tickets are now on sale to see the Disney 100 Movie Marathon at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood taking place on January 1st, 2023. The marathon will include the animated classics Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, and Frozen. Tickets are $40 and include admission to all four films, an event credential with lanyard, 20-ounce bottled beverage, D100 popcorn container with popcorn, and collectible print. For 40 bucks? That's kind of a... That's one of the best Disney deals I've heard in a long time. It, it sounds like a lot of fun, but it is kind of funny. It's like, oh, a hundred years. And it's like, but four of the films came out within like five years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, they're hits, you know. And uh, family packs are available for $120 and include four of each item. So there's that as well. You know, I... This is cool. I love that they're doing this. But I just... I'm going to warn people, not to dissuade anyone, but... Four movies in the seats at the El Capitan. <laughs> these are not the recliner seats we're used to in theaters these days. Good luck, uh, is what I'll say. I can't imagine marathoning at the El Capitan, unfortunately. I am looking forward to seeing, uh, was it Rob Richards, the organist? Oh, the organist, yeah. Yeah, he usually, for marathons like this, I feel like he has different outfits in between every show. So I hope that there's some fun themes there. I'm sure they'll continue the tradition. And, you know, that's part of the Disney 100 thing. Some more Disney 100 stuff we got. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit is returning to the studio that bears his creator's name, Walt Disney Animation Studios, in an all-new animated short more than 94 years since Disney's last Oswald cartoon. Now, created by Disney Animation's hand-drawn animation, team to help celebrate the start of Disney 100 Years of Wonder that marks the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. The Oswald the Lucky Rabbit short is directed by animator Eric Goldberg and produced by Dorothy McKim. And in conjunction with the animated short, Disney launched a global Oswald the Lucky Rabbit Snapchat lens that allows users to channel Oswald using AR technology. Of course, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit is considered Walt's first breakout animated star and is widely considered one of the first characters in animation history to feature a unique personality. Walt introduced Oswald to moviegoers in 1927 with the short Trolley Troubles, and uh, 26 Oswald short films were created by Walt and his team with the final Disney shorts starring the character releasing in 1928, the same year Walt lost creative control over his beloved rabbit. In 2006... Disney CEO Bob Iger made an unprecedented deal with NBC Universal that allowed sportscaster Al Michaels to contract with NBC in exchange for the return of Oswald to his home. Since then, Oswald has appeared in video games, merchandise, Disney theme parks, and more. I think it's cool that they're doing another short because I, I'm not a gamer, so I'm not into that world. But like, I feel like they haven't done a ton with him since they got him back, but I love that they got him back. So this is kind of cool. Did you watch the short? I did. It's very short, but yeah. it was fun. Uh, it's a little reminiscent of Get a Horse. Uh, yeah. Just like a similar theme there. But I thought it was really fun. And they have done a few things with him. Like they've had the meet and greet internationally, like especially like they had a big merch line at uh, Tokyo Disney Sea for him, uh, where he was quite popular. I also want to note that a lot of those early Oswald shorts are now entering the public domain. So as they do so, We've been uploading them to our YouTube channel on Laughing Place, so you can check them out there if you haven't seen them before. Huh, so Disney isn't trying to Mickey Mouse this and, like, hold on to those rights, huh? Well, maybe that's what the new short was all about, but no, I don't, I don't think that's how it works. It's going to be very interesting when Mickey Mouse comes up again, 
but you know it's it's one by one it doesn't i don't think it means that you can just get rights to the character it's going to be confusing although you know there's the Pooh bear uh serial killer movie or whatever coming out but it's definitely the aa milne one they had to he had to not wear a shirt i think is what the rule was <laughs> well there is a lot going on for the disney 100 celebration of course the new year hasn't even started but i feel like we've gotten a ton of announcements about disney 100 stuff events and you know just stuff they're doing in honor of it and this is part of it as well as um you know the el capitan thing so Mm -hmm. i think it's pretty cool so interesting to note that this was you know disney 100 seemed to be something really spearheaded by bob chapek so uh it'll be interesting to see i don't think i agree it's a good idea like yeah you're gonna celebrate the hundredth of the company but it was like chapek took a lot of pride to be like i'm gonna be the person to lead this company into its second century and that's that did not end up being the case yeah, I don't I, I don't really associate it with Bob Chapek personally, but that's just because I didn't really this is gonna sound weird, but I didn't really think he took pride in anything <laughs> related to the company other than like how much money they were making. I, I don't just I didn't associate creative things like this to him. So I just assumed it was you know, that team of people who sit and like, Okay, what anniversary is coming up? Oh, thank God we have a big one coming up. We don't have to make up one this year. So <laughs> Disney one hundred, pretty huge. I know there's a lot of confusion from people who remember the 100 Years of Magic celebration back in 2001, which was celebrating Walt Disney's 100th birthday since he was born in 1901. This is the 100th celebration of the Walt Disney Company, which began in 1923. It's the 23 in D23. Exactly. Are you 23? Do you remember that marketing back in the day? 100%. Yeah, the black posters. And all it said was, are you 23? And it was the biggest tease for a long time. And then they announced it. And I was like, boom, sold, done. I'm in. Day one charter member. Yeah. And then I'm like, why am I still getting these magazines? (laughs) I haven't opened it in forever. I wish they'd bring back the silver. I got to be honest, I don't open them either. But I love them because... I have every single one, including the variant covers. Whenever they, I hated the variant covers because they would send you one and then you'd have to like search out and buy the other two or three that they would create. And I bought them all. So, like, I have <laughs> well, a complete collection. What's funny is fairly recently they started selling a couple random back issues on Shop Disney. But they were only available to buy if you were a D23 member. I'm like, well, that seems redundant. If you're a D23 member, you probably already have these. Unless yeah. you're brand new. Yeah, uh, it is a good magazine. It's just one of those things. It's just the time thing. But there, yeah. I, I used to read them cover to cover. It's been a long time. I will get back to them at some point. But it's a quality magazine. Um, so, yeah, definitely worth checking out if you're interested. Also want to mention before we go, Newsies, the big production at Wembley Park Theater in the UK, has opened. It looks fantastic. Uh, Everybody knows I love Newsies. And this was a really big production because I think it was the first one outside of the U.S. It looks really, really good. I kept hearing it was going to be in the round. When I look at some video of it, it's actually like a three-quarter stage. So it's more Mm -hmm. of a thrust stage with the audience around three-quarters of the stage. But, I mean, it's massive in scale. The ceiling is so high. Like, it, it looks amazing. So... If you're a Newsies fan, check out some video footage from the Wembley Park Theater production. And, of course, I'll include some links in the show notes. So, check it out. Are they going to film that one? And will you be in the front row? If they they do, do, I will be. How about that? Okay. (laughs) I'll make that deal. I don't think they're going to film it, no. But I'm still waiting for the recording of Prince of Egypt in London to be released. Because I got to tell you... I've been so basically one year ago from now, I was in London and I've been craving going back. And so, Prince of Egypt was the favorite theater show I saw when I was there, and I've been listening to it. And oh my God, it's so damn good. It's unbelievable. And uh, I know that they record they recorded it like three weeks before I went, and we've heard nothing about what they're doing with that. And it drives me crazy one day. In any case, Kyle, this is the last House of Mouse headlines of the season, but good news for all of you listeners, I did it once again. I convinced Kyle to return for season 10 in February of 2023, back with the House of Mouse headlines. And listen, until then, you can stay up to date on the latest Disney news over at laughingplace.com. Indeed. Excellent. Anything else you want to add, Kyle, before we go? Uh, Well, I'm sure... 
you might hear me say this again, but congratulations on another season. I know how hard you work on this and how much time you put into it. And it definitely shows every week when I get that email to my inbox. And I'm like, oh, clever way to f- frame this episode that I was on and I still want to click and listen to. So uh, <laughs> well, looking thank forward you. to do another year. Thank you, Kyle. And, and the House of Mouse headlines wouldn't exist without you. So thank you. And uh, since since Kyle plugged it, why the heck not? Head over to DisneyCoastToCoast.com to sign up for that free newsletter and just click on free gifts. You'll get some gifts along with it there. But yeah, until next year. Enjoy the break, and uh, I'll see you. Oh, uh, we'll talk, but be- we'll talk between <laughs> then. But uh, the folks will hear you in a couple months. Exactly. Looking forward to it. Bye, everybody. To read more about any and all of the stories you've heard here today, simply visit the show notes link in this episode's description. You've heard the news, and now I want to hear what you have to say about it. What do you think of the upcoming new Disneyland After Dark event? Share your thoughts on that or any other topics mentioned in today's episode. Call 818-860-2569 and you may just hear yourself on a future episode of Disney Coast to Coast. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Don't miss the Season 9 finale of Disney Coast to Coast next Wednesday, December 21st. This episode has been executive produced by Mackenzie Jalen Arnold. Gain rewards like Mackenzie, including access to never-before-heard episodes and livestream Q&As, by visiting the Patreon link in this episode's description. Basically, anything you need can be found in this episode's description, from additional information and links discussed in this episode found in the show notes, to the DCTC hotline, where you can leave a voicemail and be heard on a future episode, access to the show's official website, some free gifts from me to you, and so much more. So be sure to check out this episode's description. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast! Have a magical day! <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. This podcast is part of the De Podcast Network. Learn more about this show, plus find more quality and entertaining podcasts at depodcastnetwork.com. That's D E Podcast Network.com.